everyone, welcome back to Steve's Place Down Under. Today we're going to get the white going and move a couple of trailers down the back, so let's start her up. Probably notice I'm a bit grubby and um, it's the episode where I've done the PC220 Komatsu, so that was this morning, that's why I'm so filthy. Again, promoting the white shirts, um, they are dirty but in stock. So if you want to get your order in, I think we've only got XL in these ones, but I, I may be wrong. So um, they're good, they look good, they're a lot cooler, but they get dirty. So you just pr probably a, something you'd, you'd wear to a, a show or something, promote and help me out. That'd be fantastic. So the old white behind me here is a 1973 um, white 4000. It's got a straight 671 in it, 15 speed overdrive. It's got 38,000 pound rock wheels on Ryko four spring suspension. We got this, we used to drink a lot of piss when we were young, young blokes, um, we still do, but years ago we used to, uh, we had a real problem with getting the phone out on eBay when we were piss, and we, we'd wake up to, you've won this item, so that's how I got a lot of these tractors and there was a few of us involved in it, but this was won, so we'd won it, I think it was at Singleton, and well we didn't win it, it went to the the bloke that won it didn't want to pay for it, so I come back to the second highest bidder, which was us, and I think we give 1,200 or something for her. it. But the motor was completely rooted. It had, they'd got the engine that hot, um, all the paint on top of the bonnet was flaked off. It was all just broken out. So <clears throat> it was originally an old single headlight bonnet, but it was it was smashed up. When I, when I got this one, it was smashed up to this bonnet, but one mud guard was basically missing the whole front of it so we made that my dad and myself made a, a a mold up out of aluminium and and if you put like a polish on the back of it you can fiberglass against it it's like a release agent so it'll it'll you can just peel it off after it's all set and we so basically made a lot of that corner there what well, i don't even know what side it was now but one of the corners were missing it's obviously off a different model but so she had the original one had the single headlight and the just a little short white sort of in, in a bit of a fancy riding, just a small badge in the middle. So she's made up a little bit. She only had one air cleaner, had a lubrifier on one side. It was a 671, um, different spec, same horsepower. Blower was on the other side. So I had an old auto car here I bought, but it was completely rooted, but she had a good engine in her, which is which was this 671 that's in this. I pulled it out and, and ran it for a while and, and she ended up getting worse and worse, so we rebuilt it. So. The blower's on the other side, it's just all made up of bits and pieces. Original diffs, transmission. When I say original diffs, the banjos and everything are the same, but I bought a G89 Volvo um, many, many years ago. It, it, it had a 15 speed overdrive, which went in the blue Kenworth behind me. And it had 38,000 pound rock wheels, which are 411s that went into this. So we just pulled the centers out and put in this. Pulled the direct out of the Kenworth and put back in the Volvo, so it's all still driving. It's it's a wreck though, well, but we'll do a start up on that soon, I reckon. Um, <clears throat> I painted it myself. We, I I've, I've done most of it. All the painting, the the radiator was amazing. That cost us about thirty six hundred bucks to get the radiator record. Had to rebuild, like weld all the tanks up, and um, I made the bumper bar just out of a bit of flat, and I made all that myself. I was I was. I don't know, it was back in about 2010, I reckon. Got some new windows put in her, um, painted it all myself, as I said, and, and we, then we drove it straight to Alice Springs. So that's out in the centre of Australia. We drove, this one didn't go to, all the way to Ayers Rock, the Kenworth did. We left this at the homestead before it because it's a bit slower and we took the Kenworth. But, so she went all the way out there and done a hell of a lot of runs around here. But it's just that bit underpowered, like, um, it's a comfortable truck, it's, it's got great vision out of it. it, it handles nice, but it's just a bit underpowered. I have got an 871, I've told the bloke I'd take out of an old uh, slimline cab like these two here, Kenworth, an old ex set actually, um, that would slot straight in, but I sort of like the 671 for its, you know, it's, it's fairly unique, but if it had the same power as this blue Kenworth, you wouldn't get me out of the thing. So uh, that's that's what may be happening in the future. But when I say powerful truck, that's when I say I want one of those Ford LTSs too. But And thank you to all those people that sent those because I've been getting a lot of, lot of offers. I had an S-Line, um, 
about six LTSs which were in fantastic order but the one that took my eye was about six thousand dollars and that's about the price range I, I don't think LTSs are worth much more than that these days unless they're in good condition with big sleeper bunks like the other ones I was sent but they're a little bit out of my league um, beautiful trucks but the one I was sent was a 97 model and I can't register that for three years because the rego I use is uh, a historic rego like the little number plate there um, and it's got to be 30 years and older here in New South Wales so I wouldn't be able to register it for three years until 2027 so otherwise I'd be on my way now bringing it home um, and a series 60 in it with an 18 speed it was just a day cab air glide it was just fantastic a perfect truck but three years too early and two blokes sent it to me one um, on on Facebook messenger and, and another one my mate Josh so he was in my wedding party Josh a good mate of mine he owns the 89 Volvo down 88 Volvo down the back but again that's the sort of price range I'm looking at but I mean, if this had a lot of power, it's still going to be noisy. It's still not aircon if we go for those, those quick runs where we pick something up. So anyway, time will tell. I've had to buy a new lawnmower in the, t in the meantime, so that may even not even happen. I might just have to put up with these old things. So we're just going to move two trailers out of the road down there. This is part of the cleaning up where we saw we move all the earth movers. I don't know. It might be before or after this, however we, however we uh, um, release it. So... We're going to get it going and just hook up to those two trails. Again, not, not going to be an exciting episode, but it's content for you to enjoy and there's something I'm doing, so why, why not put it out for you? Before we go anywhere, I've just put a bit of a, a bit of a snack pack together to take. There's a few in there. Um, give you a bit of a walk around. She's only a light duty little, little truck, really. It's only got little 5.8 studs and sort of a lighter front axle on her. Used to have a stack on it, but originally the build sheet said it come out with this, so I quite like that side pipe. Makes it makes an early truck look tough. I had a couple on the cab. She used to drum, and, and uh, I sort of grew out of that look, I suppose. Um, it was a water cart, so I put all the I put all the the turntable on it. I don't know where even where I got that off a of Volvo, I think it was. Um, new tyres. It's got a Kenworth light bar on it. I've redone all the dot rated fittings that just had plastic push fits and I got away with that for too long, I think. Fairly basic, uh, I got f brand new Freightliner tanks, a bloke bought a truck and he wanted bigger tanks on it, I think it was a concrete edge or something like that, so I just put these two little ones on it, but I'd like the big steel white 4000 tanks, but it'd make it look a lot better, but you know, it's, it's done a lot of miles, it was a 20, 2010 or 11 or something, I got it on the road, so it's, what's that, 14 years, really? Um, Open her up, see if she fires up. Had her all upholstered inside. You see that beautiful, beautiful trim she's got in it. That was plastic. I had a bloke bloody patch it up and cover it. I got the seat done. That was where the money was, the radiator and the interior. What a nice dash and the old girl. It's a bit dark in here, but... Things that noisy, you know, it's just ridiculous. You get to where you're going and uh, everyone's enjoying a brown sandwich, you just got to have 10 minutes to yourself to let your ears stop ringing, but that, that doesn't happen until halfway through the week, so. Anyway, we'll see if she fires up. Just shut that buzzer off with the key. Um, just a low air buzzer, obviously. That's got Jacobs on it. They're not working for some reason. They used to. I don't know if it's a micro switch on the clutch or the governor, but that's all it'd be. 15 speed. Beautiful old transmission. I'll just go and move the tractor while she's while she's uh, building air up.
I'm just going to set the camera up so you can see her back under the trailer. I'll just give you a quick look at her. Fairly exquisite looking machine. For those of you who are new to the channel, there's plenty of us you know, doing hauling the human stuff with this, going and picking up equipment and whatever. Um, plenty of in-cab rides with it. Some lovely background noise for you and your wife while you're cooking tea to have on in the lounge room. She's lovely really, it's just uh, a little bit more power would be magnificent. If you can still hear me, should be out. I've got the microphone on today. I just registered this float that you're looking at now, me back and under for twenty-six dollars yesterday. Now, give you some idea why I want to wait for a '94 model truck to pay that that cheap rego. It's just unbelievable. I've done a lot of K's with it this year and picking up old equipment, and you know, it's, it's well within our rights to do so. But I've been pulled over a couple of times, and nothing's nothing's happened. Well, check the truck over and everything's good so she's a bit different height because I've had her under the Kenworth she's only got blocks under we don't use uh, landing legs on this one it just you just use a table to lift her up that couple inches If you're looking at me shirt admiring it, make sure you get your orders in. They're selling quick. Get the word out there. Someone might ask about it. Wanna have a look? If you're into this old truck content too, make sure you check out my old mate Dave from Old Rigs Down Under. He's a good mate of mine. I talk to him on the phone a lot, and he's not into Whites or Kenworths, but he's got a he got a very uh, interesting collection of Max, main, mainly F models, cab overs, but got some lovely old gear. So go and check him out. Boost his channel too. These old whites have only got a single air system, so your, your maxi for your truck releases your trailer too. Whether at Kenworth, you got a you got a uh, release valve for your trailer. actually came to the wedding our wedding in this truck my dad drove it I drove one of the tractors down and, and she's still got something here I, I, I'm not up on the uh, on the wedding garment but uh, something's still in here that's nice and white probably not going to be for too long
heavy old float. This was an old military one. I'd say they used to transport tanks or something on it. It's, it's really, really heavy. Like for, for a truck like this, you sort of load it before you put anything on it. I towed it, towed it on one of the hall and the humes once with that little grater, that galleon grater I got on the back. And I had a hell of a time getting it down there. It was just, it just working the whole way. Plus I put some bloody lower grade diesel in it from the shop up the road here. And I sort of tend to run premium in them now. It makes a hell of a difference sort of just flat the whole way, I didn't enjoy it, plus it was raining and oh, we still had a good time when we got there obviously. But... Not a bad looking old, old um, outfit with that trailer on it, sort of all period correct. I didn't hook the, uh, the Susie call for the lights up, but I'd like to, I'd like to sandblast and paint this trailer. They, they used to pull this, um, it was converted from military into many, many, many years ago by uh, the uncle's brother-in-law converted it to the, the suspension and the axles that are under it but you can see it's got those big big eye beams on the on the gunnel plus two more up the center of the chassis um, it's, it's just very heavy but they used to pull it with an old 1418 single drive Mercedes Benz and cart an old D6 on it that's what it was built for um, they've done a few other jobs obviously but that's that's the main purpose of it now, my uncle still owns it, but he, he's moved away and he leaves her here at my place, so I've been registering it. And I've done a lot of miles with it now, picking up old stuff, just a story, but... <coughs> uh, you'll probably hear the background noise. There's my dad on the old Sami Centauro. We're doing a bit of cleaning up here, so... Um, just getting off the truck subject for a minute, the old white. All this stuff was in a big line here, from those of you who've been watching us for a long time would have noticed the line through here of, of all the, the plants and the cranes and stuff all the trucks are on this side of the road we're gonna we're gonna take the grass off here and put a hard stand got a lot of material out the back gate there on the so, either side of the road so we're gonna cart that down either with the old flintstone the echo or the albion we'll use the old park to load it and dad's going to be pushing it out so i'll do the cart and uh, we're just going to put a hard stand in here. It'll probably probably go from the road back to the front of the old crane there Right through to where the Alice Chalmers is down the other end there the old HD7 so um, Then we're not then we're not having this sort of drama here when we come down and tinker with them with the weeds and the oh, It's just <clears throat> Try and eliminate some some maintenance I, I guess See the old, old trucks here, they've got some beautiful old things here, but they're just old eight wheeler here. Look at her, she's the weeds are loving it. That's the one with the UD5 Nissan diesel in it. If you haven't heard of a supercharged Nissan diesel, two stroke, um, two episodes on it, go and have a look. You won't be you won't be disappointed. I do a lot of talking in it. If you don't like the talking, fast forward to when I crank it up. There's one explaining what UD means, um, and there's one where we take the muffler off and it nearly blew our ears out. We had neighbours and everything ring after it. Uh, you think it, you think an 871 or a Detroit sounds good? You just you, you need to watch this episode for those people who haven't seen that. So go back and check it out. Two stroke, five cylinder Nissan diesel uh, U, UD. So you can see the weeds. All these trucks are going to come on this side of the road once the hard stands down because we're going to plant all this. Um, it's going to be it's going to be aerated and seeded. So for for some sort of reason, anyway. That's not part of the channel, eh? We might do a bit of tractor work on the channel, but that's just a that's just a personal thing we've got to do. Um, there is an episode of us moving all this. I'm just showing you as while we're here that that may be released before this episode. So if not, it's coming up. Uh, we'll disconnect her, and then we'll move that little float down there, that blue one. We're just going to take it back. It's actually going tomorrow, but it's in the way for what we're doing now.
Get in there, you mongrel. She's still got a, bit, a little bit of timber under one of them back wheels. No vacuum brakes on this old trailer. You can see the setup on the gooseneck there. You probably notice a different axle configuration, the suspension configuration on it. It's an old telecom trailer, which is um, a tele, uh, telephone line company here in Australia, the communications company. Now Telstra used to cut all the old, all the old um, cable reels around on it. That's that's why that suspension's just to get the to get the deck down so low and had the had the cable go between the axles there. So it hasn't actually got a solid axle. It's just got those two rockers, as you can see. They're really common, but here years and years ago, even even my age, I remember them.
beaver. Just gotta get the camera on the way up. It's all set up there. I don't know what happened, I have one in the crank. One of the barrels is okay, just give it an excuse to rebuild it. She's back in the shed. Um, I didn't film it. It's a bit tight between that motorhome and the, and the other trucks there. Um, so thanks for everyone watching. Just want to support us so we can. I've got these beautiful old trucks here. The Trainstar 400 there. There's an 871 in it. And I've got this old K124 um, twin steer. So it's an eight wheeler with a 400 big cam in it. So that that's going to be registered soon, but yeah, I, I can't I can't do these other ones. This Saturday's not enough, so for, it's sort of something I'm going to hang on to if I ever go full time with YouTube. It's a, it's a distant dream at the moment, but I guess we've all got dreams. So if you want to see some of that content, please share, please like, please help this channel grow. Um, thanks to all the Patreon members, fantastic. They they really support me. I've gained a few of those in the last week. Um, all the people sending me private stuff on Instagram and Facebook under the same name, Steve's Place Down Under. Thanks very much. See you on the next episode. <laughs>